Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, I do hope you are all doing well today, man. I really do hope that it's the morning after the night before where Chelsea put in a performance against Sheffield United that can only really be described as an abomination. Sometimes I feel I really appropriately named this channel in Football Therapy because a lot of the time, let's be real, we need some football therapy. Anyway, welcome back to Chelsea News of sorts, the series where I go across football news media daily, consolidate everything regarding Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Learn to talk first, present it to you guys in a package, give you my opinion, but more importantly, ask for your opinion down in the comments section below. And although I am talking about a couple of things that have been floating around social media and news media, I do also want to present my opinion on a couple of things. Ah, that's right, it's the perfect opportunity to do a post-mortem in what was the worst performance of the season for Chelsea Football Club. Look at the sort of blatantly obvious weak areas and talk about making that better moving forwards. Anyway, if you do like daily football content, I want to urge you guys to subscribe to this channel, hey, if you've not already done so, and only if you want to, mate, because if you do, I upload every single day, you might like it, so consider subscribing, hitting that all-important bell notifications icon, and if you want to do me a favour, that'd be nice, please, can you uh, drop a like on this video, cheers. And we begin. Right, first and foremost, I want to let you guys know that I do not clear Frank Lampard for blame for that loss yesterday. I do feel he could have done some stuff better. Um, he's a learning young coach. He's done a lot of things right this season, but he will get a few things wrong as he learns on the job. So I'm not excusing anyone, man. No one rides for free here on Football Therapy, top to bottom. There was problems all over the gaff there. But what is seemingly blatantly obvious is Chelsea do have a personnel issue from Jose Mourinho to 2015 to Antonio Conte to Maurizio Sarri to Frank Lampard. Everyone is questioning player mentality and mental strength and it's a recurring theme of late. The two pieces of news I'm going to talk about is a little teaser from Andrea Nana, potential goalkeeping replacement for Chelsea Football Club. We'll have a little word on Onana in a moment. And recent reports coming out the last 12, 24 hours that Kai Havertz would require Chelsea to have Champions League football to sign for us. I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit later. First up, positional issues in Chelsea's defensive line. That's right, we can no longer escape it. We have conceded a <laughs> Rowing amount of goals this season, like a r ridiculous amount of goals. I think the most amount of goals in the top half of the Premier League table we've conceded, I'm pretty sure. C'est une situation incroyable. It's no good, mate. So, it's all very well, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, and us talking about Kai Havertz, but we need to start talking a little bit more about the defensive line. And although Kepa can feel hard done by for us talking about a goalkeeper in this episode, because he did make a good save yesterday, and it wasn't really on him that loss. Probably should still be talking about a goalkeeper regardless. So if we're digging the post-mortem out, Aspilicueta is usually a 7 out of 10 as a defender. Maybe a little bit better if he's playing at right back, but at left back, it is just not an option. We saw him get up the pitch, and when he did, he tried to put a couple of crosses in with his left foot. That just doesn't work. Does not function. Aspilicueta left foot dot exe has failed and crashed. Chelsea need a left back. Marcus Alonso coming on to switch the system for a free back system wasn't it either. I don't want to say he's useless because he is good as a left wing back. Perhaps if you start him in that position and Chelsea generally know what they're doing, which they didn't. So left back. And at this point, man, are you all willing to take anyone? Maybe. Certainly I am. Ben Chilwell, very expensive, overpriced. But yes, I would absolutely take him as an upgrade for Chelsea's left back position at the moment. Tagliafico, yes please. I'd gobble it all up. Alex Tellez, hell, why not? I will take anyone. I could go in and play left back for Chelsea right now and feel a little bit more safe. No disrespect to Chelsea legend Espilicueta, I just hate everything right now. <sighs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Centre back. Kurt Zuma does look like he's got a performance in him here and there, and although Andreas Christensen has flashes of brilliance, he has had almost permanent looking 
badness. I like to think I can speak quite well sometimes, but sometimes I just really can't. Declan Rice, enter Declan Rice. Everyone stop your anti Declan Rice campaigners, your Declan Rice haters. He's a very, very good defensive player who is Premier League proven, but more importantly, there's a lot of peas going on here. More importantly, he is a leader at the back. He's commanding. 21 years old, captains West Ham. Oh my word, we need a little bit of that in our centre-back position. Someone who could command Kurt Zuma around him, command the central midfielders in front of him. I am massively on the Declan Rice train now. And to be honest, man, name a train, I will board that train. I will buy a ticket and I'm going wherever it takes me. But at the moment, the Declan Rice train, it looks very, very alluring and appealing. Even just whatever, man. Just get me this centre-half. Sure, bringing Gabrielle of Lille with the left foot. We all want the left footed centre half, but to be honest, man, we're lacking leadership, cohesion, and communication. Obviously, Declan Rice is going to bring that, and Gabrielle, who we don't even know speaks English, won't necessarily bring that. So, pfft. okay, we're getting through this. We're getting through this. Right, let's talk about some news. <laughs> Andre Anana is following Chelsea and apparently liking social media posts. We do know he wants to leave Ajax this summer and there is an agreement with the player and the club that he can indeed leave if a deal can be struck with a potential suitor. Now, is he following Chelsea on Instagram and liking social media posts of Chelsea losing, which kind of seemed low-key like uh, a cuss? Anyway. Does that mean something like, yes, he wants to join Chelsea, obviously he's been heavily linked, or is he just following his good friend Hakim Ziyech's new employer, his new club, Chelsea Football Club, because Chelsea have been posting photos of Hakim Ziyech training. Here is one for you now. That cheers you up. Look at what a beautiful sight that is. Here is another photo of Hakim Ziyech at Cobham training. Mm -mm -mm. Breathe it in, boys, when you're still feeling sick from the night before. What a lovely sight. We can only hope that Chelsea chained him down to the grounds that, so he could not run away after watching that performance against the Blades. Indeed. I'm definitely on board of getting a new goalkeeper now. I do have a little bit of sympathy for Kepa Aretha Balaga as he has had a truly upsetting defence in front of him for the majority of the season and he has pulled off the odd save, point saving save at you know a lot of the times. I don't think we should absolutely bin him off. I do like the idea of sending him on a long loan, hopefully rebuilding his confidence and maybe even bringing him back like Thibaut Courtois. I'm not one of these people that just want to bin him off and think he's terrible. I just think we can do better for right now to do better right now, as in like next season. So we'll see what happens with Kepa and Andre or Nana. So yeah, these stories have been going around that Havertz will only consider joining Chelsea if Chelsea qualify for the Champions League. And at this point, man, Ziyech, Werner, I'm like, whatever. I do want Havertz. He does look like a generational talent, which is a sweeping statement term that is always thrown around. He does look amazing. And if it's an opportunity thing you can get him we should absolutely get him but is it really these stories going around saying he left um, bio he wants to leave bio because there's no UCL maybe the original story was Bayer Leverkusen had to sell him if they don't do get UCL so already the stories have crossed and maybe he could still not want to play for Leverkusen if they're not in the Champions League, but still be happy to make the general club jump to Chelsea Football Club in South West London. Surely that's a massive jump in terms of club profile. You're only very young, you've got plenty of time to, you know, play in the Champions League. And who knows, Chelsea with Werner and Haver and, and Ziesch and stuff might be challenging for you know, domestic cups next season. It could be an opportunity for him to win a trophy early on in his career. Surely all that kind of stuff is appealing. No? I think it should be, man. Anyway, I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below, so make sure you do get down there and drop a like on this video, please. And stop right there, listen to me for just a moment because I'm uploading daily videos on my other channel, Jan's Yard. Hey, if you like me as a content creator, I'd urge you to go check it out and subscribe. It's non-football related content, but I try and keep it interesting and funny. So do consider subscribing. Link in top of description. Please do click. <laughs> Um, what else? Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, remember to sub to this channel, drop a like. I'm pretty tired, man. Quite hungover. So I'm going to end it here. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. 
Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me 